Hi everybody. My name is Olivia James and I'm a performance and confidence coach and I'm having another chat with my friend and colleague, uh, Christopher Paul Jones, who's also a therapist and uh, based in Harley Street, although he's based on the internet, uh, just like I've been, uh, especially during COVID. So we're both uh, able to do sessions online, although I think we're, we, you're just starting to go back um, back to having face-to-face sessions if people uh, need those. Yeah, right? from... Yeah, from time to time, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing a few clients face to face. There are some advantages for the people that want to come into central London. It is quite quiet at the moment, so it's not too bad. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, although I was in Harley Street on, on a couple of days ago and uh, there was a lot of traffic and there was a lot of like, there was a lot of action. But oh, really? still, okay. a lot of the, uh, the, the, the waiting rooms, so uh, people don't want you to come in before your appointment. You literally have to stand there yeah. and wait in the street with your mask on and then sort of the, no dawdling. Um, so things are slowly getting back to normal. Um, mm. So we, uh, we always have really interesting uh, chats um, before uh, we start we recording. See- yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, I was going to say, don't don't frame it. You'll you'll, you'll uh, make the expectations too high, Dave. Yeah, no, that. no, exactly. Before the recording, yeah, definitely. Before yeah. the recording, we have interesting chats, and then we hit the <laughs> button, and it's all downhill from there, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've uh, talked a lot in the past about managing anxiety, and we talked yeah. a lot about coronavirus when it was like really, really uh, like first hit. Uh, but today, um, I know we're going to be talking more about confidence in general and also this this mystical thing called mindset yes um which gets overused you and i have very we have similar opinions on on Mm. a lot of this stuff but also very slightly varying i think opinions on on how this stuff works but what we do have in common is that both of us help people become more confident and also with mindset issues whatever that might mean right (laughs) <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, I do think in the current climate, it's still relevant, the whole idea of confidence, because, you know, people aren't going out anymore. And uh, um, they suddenly, you know, lockdown starts to ease and suddenly the, the social anxiety and things they didn't have to worry about. Now, suddenly they're, they're, they're pushed out and it's, you know, it's a little bit more scary. So, I mean, for, for you, what, what is confidence? What would you say confidence is? Um, I think confidence sort of takes two parts so uh let me give you an example so um so a lot of work i do is with people with speaking anxiety Mm. and so confidence often is um an inner feeling it's like do i feel confident as a person so confidence tends to be like some people are scared you know they're they're not socially confident Mm. and but i think it relates to competence as well so Uh, one of my clients had to do um, an introduction, like a summary to like the global company and it's all on Zoom. And so we worked on the confidence um, of doing that, especially for many of my clients who are not natural public speakers. They're people who sort of have to do public speaking because of their work. They're not necessarily like extroverts that love like to be in the center of attention. Um, so confidence, I think one way to, to, to feel confidence is that you feel that what's asked of you is within your, within your remit, within your skill set, that you feel that you could actually do the job. Right. So if you said to me, um, can you, uh, fly a jumbo jet? I wouldn't feel confident because I have no idea how to do it. I don't have the skill set. Right. I have no idea. So and I think a lot of people get get this a little bit mixed up where they they want to feel confident, but and they think it's just going to happen. Yes. And one of one of uh, things that I've sort of learned in my personal and professional career is that feeling confident is built up. So the more you do something, the more confident you can get. Um, so you can get confidence by actually taking steps and that isn't very, 
like it isn't very Tony Robbins really in the sense of like, you know, this, 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 this feeling that's often that people think they're going to get of like insane levels of confidence and skyrocketing, like on top of the world type stuff. Right. I hear, yes. I hear you breathing in, but a lot of like what, what, I like to sort of like help people with this actually get a more of a natural confidence where the people feel that they can do what's asked of them without freaking out. Basically. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> well, I mean, I, w I wouldn't obviously criticize anyone specifically. Um, I mean, he, I, I do think, you know, he does some good stuff mentioning who you were talking about. Um, I think what you get from a four day seminar is not what you get from, you know, actually trading for weeks, but yes, that, that sudden pump up, I think it's a bit like a crash diet, really. Yeah. You'll feel, it's like, it's, it's a bit bipolar. You'll feel super high, but then you'll drop right back down. Yeah. Potentially. So you need to keep going back for your fix. And that's not a criticism of anyone particularly, but yes, it needs to be, um, uh, as you say, it, like if you're pushed too far out your comfort zone, you end up panicking. And we were saying off camera, then you, your world shrinks. So with someone who is, um, you know, agoraphobic, it's because their comfort zone has shrunk so small that anything other than their bedroom, their house has become fear-based. So, but it's, so it's pushing it. So you grow, like you say, you don't know how to dr drive a jumbo jet, fly a jumbo jet. It's normal to have fear about that. It's yeah. normal to, to not have the confidence that, and you shouldn't be confident, you know, all this, Oh, fake it till you make it. There's definitely times when you want to act as if you're confident and you'll start to feel confident, but, you know, <laughs> don't want to do politics here, but there's plenty of people uh, currently in politics that, that have, have just done that, just done. Oh, yes. I'm just it's, Everything's amazing. Everything's fantastic. And, you know, um, illnesses don't seem to respond to that level of uh, bullshit. So it, it's about <laughs> learning as well. It's not just about it. You have to change the in, internal world. So your perception, because a lot of people, it's like some people who know a lot uh, uh, they're very smart and because they're smart, they know that what they don't know and therefore they feel less confident when there's people who know a lot less um, who are out there just doing it and then, you know, and then they grow. So it, it's finding that level, I think. And, and yeah. I agree with you. I mean, for you, I mean, what, what would you say? I mean, how does someone get confidence? Um, so one way to get confidence is, first of all, like if, if, if somebody comes to me, I you know, it's a bit like um, being a detective. Like if there has been a specific event that's knocked their confidence, yeah. for example, then I will treat that. And I know you will do a similar thing. If somebody's had a bad experience, like that needs to be tackled and, and neutralized. Yeah. Um, but then also like, actually it, it doesn't sound super sexy, but it's actually put the work in. So when I uh, get somebody ready for a presentation, for example, I will get them to practice and practice and practice. And, and, it, it, and that's partly because the more somebody's practiced before they go on, if they do have a bit of a panic while they're actually presenting, uh, because if they practice it a lot, they're a lot, they're a lot less likely to go completely blank I forget yes. everything. Yeah. Um, and, the, and then there is a misconception, certainly in people who don't do a lot of speaking, where they go, oh, but I don't want to sound over-rehearsed. But it, I'm thinking, well, you're not like playing Hamlet. You know, you're not an actor. You, are, you just have to give a financial like, statement of the company. People aren't expecting you to be fresh and scintillating. Yeah. But I mean, all they, the top, all the, sorry to interrupt you, but all the top speakers I speak to say, if you think you can over rehearse it, then you're under rehearsed. Yeah. There's like, there's a level where you rehearse it, where it sounds fake. And then there's a level where it becomes natural. Exactly. And, and so I don't want to interrupt your flow, but one of my mentors, he was a very good speaker. And he said, he'd, he'd write everything down. He said, he'd rehearse it to a, to a T. And then what he would do is actually go back and put mistakes back in it. So it would sound more free flowing. So he'd actually go, Oh, um, it was 20, 20 no 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 14 that's right all that was rehearsed as well even yes. even the stumbles just to sound more realistic and, exactly yeah. and people don't realize that how much work goes into this stuff oh yes people yeah, have yeah. this misconception 
that they can just sort of step on a stage or do a Zoom and somehow it's meant to just happen without yes. putting in that work. Uh, one of my uh, colleagues did a video about this today and he called that preparation polishing your shoes, right? Uh, and as you know, um, on all these like comedy quiz programs, all the little funny ad lib things, they're all rehearsed, you know, yeah. all that stuff's rehearsed. I'll, I'll give yeah. you another- you get the questions really, ahead of time, yeah. Another good tip from uh, one of my professional speaking colleagues, uh, Jeremy Nicholas, um, is like, practice it, practice it, practice it, rehearse it, then practice it really, really fast, really, really slowly, and then like do it in a Scottish accent. So by the time you, you really learnt it, you can then play with it a bit more. Yes. Yeah. You can then be more playful and solid and know that the worst thing that happens to speakers in my sort of experience and I've sort of helped people get over this is speakers on a stage going completely blank because yes. they've gone into a panic and basically their brain freezes. So if you've rehearsed to that extent, you're much less likely to completely go blank. Absolutely. And, and you have the confidence to go off script. You have the confidence to yes. ask a answer a question you know. And, and that, that stuff isn't like what people expect. Yeah. Um, I had a client a while ago who like really loved the idea of public speaking. Yeah. Like doing standing on stage with the Madonna mic and inspiring. But I was like, what are you going to say? And he just, he oh, yeah. was like more interested in this kind of image of it than actually the message. Cause it, it should be speaking should be about the message after all. Oh, absolutely. It shouldn't yeah. necessarily about the glory. Like the glory is like a byproduct if there is any glory. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, on, on, um, I've, uh, I've just released a product actually on public speaking and it's not about how to put, there's a lot of products out there on how to present, how you stand, how you breathe, how you hold your posture. All great. No, nothing wrong with that. But if you have a phobia, if you have anxiety, it's all irrelevant because you're, you're just yeah, in yeah, your head. Yeah. And, and yeah, I mean, like I said, there's two elements. There's the external, you know, which is, is um, how you are acting, how you're thinking, how you're feeling. And then there's the internal, how much have you rehearsed, you know, all, all those other things. Um, but yeah, I mean, one of, I put this in the book and, and one of the, uh, or the kit, I should say. And one of the things that happened to me when I was scared of public speaking is uh, my mentor came to me and said, you know, you're very selfish. And I said, well, you know, how do you mean? And he said, well, because you're thinking about yourself when you get up and speak. And there's very little difference between a big ego, you know, someone who's an egotist going, everyone is looking at me. I'm amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And someone who, who is paranoid going, everyone's looking at me. They, they, noticed, they noticed that I hesitated for 10 seconds. Um, and, you know, that, that, I mean, that's the other thing I would say. If you ever watch a video back of your presentation, your thought in your head where you went, um... What do I say next? What do I say next? What do I say? Oh, everyone's looking at me. If you actually watch that back on video, it was probably like a millisecond. Exactly. It was really short, but in your yeah. head, you, everything's gone into slow motion. So yeah. it's, it's getting I out always, of that. Pattern. I always say that to, to, to clients. And the other thing about actually a well-defined pause actually gives you gravitas. Yes. As well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so if you wait like a little while before you actually speak, you sound much more considered. Unless yes. you look like a rabbit in the headlights, of course. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but that, I mean, and that's the other thing, you know, I think, you know, I often lose what I'm going to say. And, and, but if, when you're in a more confident place, you're, you're happy to just make a joke, you know? Yes. It's like well, my, my big go-to, I'll, I'll ruin my big go-to one is, is uh, you know, the great thing about these skills is they're great for memory. And then normally most people will laugh and that's, you know, and then you're, you're back on track. You're, so it's also having business. the confidence to acknowledge. Absolutely. When, you're, when you are making a mistake. And exactly. Sort of and that, and that links into the state of your nervous system as well. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah. So there is, um, like I talk about this a lot, though, there is a, there's a nerve called the, the vagus nerve, which is yes. massively implicated in, in, how, in your, how safe you feel. And yeah. so there, the, the, 
one one stage is really freeze like you're a, like a reptile in the mud the second one is fight flight where you just literally want to get off that stage yeah and the third one is social engagement where you can actually be curious and interested and a bit more playful as well so like for example i've seen you speak and you're a very good speaker i've seen you like on stage and for you, like if somebody would ask you like a slightly difficult question at the end, which is a lot of what people have fear about at the end, yeah. you would be fine and you would engage with them perfectly well and you wouldn't like get snappy with them or something. You even if you, you know, you wouldn't, and that's like a mark of a very good speaker who's relaxed, yeah. is to have be in that state of the nervous system where they, they're not so snappy and reactive that they can actually engage with a question and and be actually okay with different opinions for example yes unless yeah. the person's being complete dude of course which i mean even then i mean it depends on <laughs> i mean on the work you and i do even then you can you could deconstruct if you have the time of you could course. deconstruct that and go i mean i have done that i've gone you know it's the people that pay you to come to a talk and then tell you why they know it better those are always the best ones to have and and uh, again one, one of my my colleagues um he he just he just went uh, well this is a beginner's course you clearly know more you don't need to be here so here's your money back and here's some money to go buy yourself a pint i'll see you at the end you know and i thought that was a great i'd never That's done that good. myself you but, well you yeah. and i have obviously w between us we are talking about qualifications can yeah. you imagine between us the amount of letters we have after our name and the amount of certificates are quite ast astonishing. Absolutely. So this means that you and I have been in lots of training rooms over the years with lots of people yeah. where people ask the what if questions and basically a lot of, uh, a lot of people have their own agendas, right? Yes. So we, you will have people asking questions with the, with the only sole purpose of making the trainer look like an idiot. Yeah. Just and themselves look clever. Yeah. <laughs> it's in any question that starts with, don't you think? Yeah. There's, don't you think? It's like, well, you do. Um, but, one, of, um, one of my trainers uh, always refused to answer what if questions. Yeah. So there was a, a, a one of my courses I went on um, is an eye movement. Um, yeah. Is on eye movement. And one of the questions would be, well, what if the person's blind? And he was like, I just don't engage with what if questions. The other person I trained. Oh, I had with, that. By the way, I had that. I yeah. was teaching that exact same technique and I had a blind person do it and I did it with clicks. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, um. One of, another one of the trainings I went on was uh, really good, actually. He would, because um, it was trauma-related, and of course, if, there, if it's a trauma-related training, by definition, mm. there's going to be several people in the room who are, uh, have trauma as well. Yeah. So he would always say, I don't allow cross-talk. Because what would happen is a person would ask a, ask a question yeah, and then he would answer and then someone else would try and chip in. So, and he would just say no. And um, the other thing he wouldn't engage is in is, um, uh, well, my aunt Sophie has this, what about aunt Sophie? And he said, I'm not going to answer questions about someone I yeah. don't know. Send but it, all send those things, yeah. coming back to the confidence, those yeah. sorts of boundaries as a speaker, actually part of your confidence as a speaker so that you say actually this is within the parameters of this talk i will ask questions about this but not on that yeah i i, I think that's good to set your boundaries i will say just just on the the what if not everyone is not everyone is born to to try and catch you out some people it is a genuine question so yes. some people learn through counterexample, which means they always look for the words, what if, as you say, what if questions. Um, people with a high amount of trauma and anxiety tend to yell in what if. So he, if they've done a session, for example, they'll be very, they'll go, oh, I feel good right now. What if I don't feel good tomorrow? Um, and, and yeah, my big line for that is they're, they're always like, oh, I feel good right now. Oh, you plan on feeling bad tomorrow. Right? And um, so, but it's realizing that some people will learn that way. But obviously, yeah. if there's too much of that, it's, 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 again, it's knowing when the question is genuine and when, and having the confidence when to close it down and just exactly. go, Absolutely. Oh, we can answer that at the end as well. But yeah, as you exactly. say, that comes to confidence. But for, uh, you know, yeah. we, we, we talk about this a lot, you know, I, I certainly do. And I think you do, you know, the whole Pavlovian dog, uh, 
you know, condition response. So when we've had bad experiences, we tend to link negative associations to it. So we've talked a lot about speaking. You know, if you've had, for me, I had a bad experience speaking um, uh, when I, I, I was uh, dyslexic. I was, am, but, you know, I learned, learned skills. And uh, I, at high school, I had to get up and speak. And uh, all the kids laughed at me. And then in that moment, my brain's going, never do that again. It yeah. was embarrassment. Um, so what, if, if you lose your confidence, how do you get it back? For, what, what would your advice be? Um, uh, so one thing would be uh, to try and deal with that bad experience. So, for example, with you, that hmm. bad experience, I imagine that you did some work on that. Yes. So that bad experience, when you think back on it now, it doesn't trigger you in the same way. So when yes, you think absolutely. back on that situation now, your brain and your body don't go that you're back there and you're feeling those feelings exactly in the moment. Plus the fact is like, never going to do that again, never going to do that again. So yeah. that's the, the first thing. Obviously, and sometimes obviously you, you will need to do a get some specialist one-to-one help with that. Yeah. There are obviously uh, other sort of techniques that you can do on yourself where you go, well, that's happened once, but very often yeah. because that memory is encoded in such a strong way, rationalizing yourself out of it when it's been that traumatic often isn't going to be the quickest way no. uh, yeah, to do agree. it. And little is, tricks like stu- like stupid advice, like just imagine the audience naked it, or uh, all this, any of this other stuff just isn't yeah. going to help somebody who's had a bad experience like that. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it, it's not that those things can't help when the, when the, when it, when the feelings are tiny, but when it's full blown, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's like weeing in the wind as they say, you know, it's just, yeah, 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 it, yeah. The, the, the fear is so strong that those little things they're great at the back end but they're not yeah. Gonna, yeah as you say you have to go back and uh, and deal with those things the eye movement is a good one scrambling yeah, the yeah. visuals I, I find is another good one so there's, there's a lot of techniques out there, there are a lot of techniques that. that can help uh, especially this sure. day and age you know 30 years ago not, it, it was sit on a couch and talk about it for the yeah. next 10 years which you know again there are place time and a place for that but generally with phobias it, it, it's slow and fairly and that isn't the fastest way plus yeah. the fact is that that trauma isn't encoded in that part of the brain that Absolutely. processes language you can't anyway. you can't analyze your way out of trauma you know emotions no. aren't logical that's the problem so trying no. to rationalize something that is essentially emotional yeah. is not always the helpful no. one as we, we talk about a lot so yeah coming on to mindset then that, that's what how we started this conversation for you, what is my, what would you say mindset is and what do you think the misconceptions are about So it? I have a real problem with the word mindset because it's often yeah. Go on. Uh, people say uh, you just need to change your mindset. If you have a problem, you need to change your mindset, right? Yeah. And when it comes to like a trauma like that, how do you do that? I'm personally not entirely sure that, that within a neuroscience or with, with within modern psychology there is actually such a thing as mindset i mm. think there is obviously people have identity and they have things like self-worth and those sorts of things but the idea that we have some sort of like a mindset seems to be like almost like a computer program mm-hmm. that that operates us whereas most of the time it, it, it does I don't think it quite works like that I think humans are more complicated than people would like to think yeah. um and so that's why I have a, a bit of a problem well I do have a big problem with that term because I honestly having like studied this stuff for years and years and years still don't really quite think it's the right term mm. um and so and you, you obviously you got a lot of like mindset coaches and people like that. Um, I mean, I, I call myself a confidence and performance coach. So I help people with that stuff, but mindset seems to be very much uh, a top down thing. So if you think mm. about um, yes. the nervous system and how complicated our nervous system is, we talked about the vagus nerve earlier on this idea of mindset seems to imply that there's some logical bit here that steers us Mm. like the logical bit steers the rest of it and i think most of the time that isn't actually how humans work yes 
Well, there was a, there was a whole study done and, and, and what they used to think is you get a thought and then you get a feeling. Um, so, you know, again, most therapies try and interrupt the thought first, yeah, yeah, yeah. but actually the, the, the studies now show that it's the other way around. The feeling exactly. comes first and then the thought, yeah. thought is created. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, to just to interrupt you for a moment. Yeah. Uh, so the, 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 I think the body, the body actually comes first. Yeah. Um, and a lot of a lot of the, the, the trauma work is, I think, and it and all of the mindset work actually is establishing safety in the body first will then enable the person to be more rational about what they decide. So they'll have more control okay. yeah. over their decisions and their operating processes. Um, so if we can, can we can we use an example? It might be helpful for people. So often mindset is used uh, around things like finance, right? Mm -hmm. So you're often here, you need to change your money mindset. Can you think of another area where it's used? Um, I suppose in... in well, a, I think it is used in confidence as well. In, you know, and in resilience as well. Resilience, yeah. Mindset I think in coaching, resilience, yeah. probably that's a good example where people are taught you have to develop a resilient mindset especially mm -hmm. in the field of entrepreneurialism for example yes, yes right yes. and so but i mean all of us i think speaking for many of my friends and colleagues um especially having just gone through this pandemic people's people have been really knocked so even the most most resilient people in this pandemic have sort of lost they certainly have moments where they lost their 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 sort of tough mindset you know what i mean like they're, oh absolutely yeah, they're, yeah. it's been, a, it's it's been a real big Some, reset uh, someone i know talks a lot about mental toughness yeah now when it comes to resilience um i think it's a really good idea to actually if you have had a knock to actually um actually acknowledge it and deal with yes. it instead of sort of pretending like it never happened and you just got to be tough and like because i think if you do that then you sort of suppress a lot of things and you're creating problems for later on yes yeah yeah um so what's what's your take on the resilience mindset i, I can't well, wait I to think, hear what i mean there's a the there's a big one and, and, and you know, this, this power through mind, mindset, they are, this power through idea is probably quite useful in times. You know, you dig deep, you find a way, you step up. Now I do sound like the person you referenced to earlier. Um, plenty of times in my life where that's what I needed. I needed to get back up, kick myself up the ass. But when it comes to tackling things like anxiety and, and confidence, it's, it's a bit like going to a yoga class and going, right let me focus at being the best at, at being meditating right i'm gonna be the best focus it's the exact opposite you actually have to surrender and just be a pit and go well whatever comes up comes up mm -hmm. and actually the more at peace you can be with how you are the better it is and um you know people ask me and they go well, you know what do i think of positive thinking and it's like well as opposed from negative thinking it's great you know um but when people say positive thinking they don't just mean okay what you know what am i putting in my head what am i feeling they mean Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts. Yeah. That's exactly that. Push, push though all that trauma down, pretend it's not there, and just power through. And the and and you're you're like it's like you're trying to drive forward with a handbrake on. There comes a point where you just get to burnout. And yeah, I do yeah. see that in a lot of people that are very driven, very type A personalities. Rather than taking time to reflect and go, oh, it's okay. It's okay to have a down day. Yeah, all yeah. emotions are okay. As long, you know, but obviously you want to live in the one. As long as, the, as, long as they keep moving, basically. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. The, the, as long as they don't get stay stuck. No, that's, that's, a, yeah. that's, a, that's a really good point. Uh, and I think that, the, the, yeah. the positive psychology, it's a similar kind of thing. Yeah. Where so often, like within the therapeutic relationship, certainly for me, like if somebody's, I, my, my, I always like to strike a balance. So I want to acknowledge their trauma and their feelings, but at the same time, I want to help them to not get stuck in that. Yes. And I think that's the difference. And if somebody, so people are always surprised because 
um, I'm trained in a thing called provocative therapy. One yes. of the things I'm trained in. So often we, we will actually laugh about stuff. And so that this idea of like, being positive all the time i think i agree with you i think it's it's completely unsustainable yeah. and that isn't actually how humans operate best so in provocative therapy we we deal with the negative stuff and we sort of like add humor to it and warm to it and we sort of turn it up a yes. bit and then the person actually has a more balanced view because yeah. we are both positive and negative we all have bad moments and good moments, positive moments. And to think that yeah. we must be positive and thingy all, you know, and happy all the time and resilient all the time and uh, tough yeah. all the time. It just well, again, you just, you end up denying part of yourself and that's exactly. not helpful. So it's, it's to acknowledge that part, go, what does it need and working with it? But yeah, um, provocative therapy as in challenging therapy. I used to work for Farrelly, Frank Farrelly. Uh, I'll just drop that in subtly. Um, Amazing. Yes. Yeah. Um, and uh, again, people, again, but people sometimes misinterpret that, you know. Um, they, uh, they, he they, did it with they like, and, Yeah, God, they, so. I think people, so I've like uh, two of my mentors like trained with Farrelly extensively mm. and I watched them do a lot of provocative therapy with people. And to the audience, especially done within a training, it can look a little bit much, but then you look at yeah. the, the recipients and, and they are laughing, laughing and they it literally pops. Sometimes yeah. the right sort of provocative therapy comment can totally pop somebody's. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you, you make them laugh or you challenge. If someone has always had sympathy, that's the other, if they've always been used to, oh, poor you, poor you. And someone just goes, oh, well, that's because you're, 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 you must be rubbish then. Then there, there's a tender, oh no, to challenge it. And they, uh, you know, um, John Grinder, I think, talks about this, one of the creators of, or developers of uh, neurolinguistics, NLP. Um, and he says, you know, we're in a room of 300 psychologists. We were modeling Farrelly. Um, and uh, he was with a client. And he said, the client was laughing, Farrelly was laughing, and there were 300 psychologists just <laughs> um, And that's the point, you know. Going, it's, um, you can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's and so not it, how you do it. <laughs> and so, yeah, so again, there isn't, there isn't always one, one way, you know, everyone's different and, you know, it, it really depends on where you're at. But, but I think being told how you should think rather than what you're actually thinking is the key. It's like, yeah. well, what am I thinking? What do I, where do I want to be? And what's the gap? And but they say exactly. going, I must change. I must change. I must change tends to create more tension exactly. and you don't want that. And as you quite rightly said earlier, Creating a safe space within yourself, create, sorry, safe space is the wrong word, uh, but you know, that has a political connotation, but creating that feeling that you can trust because, you know, when you come to phobias, one of the things I often find is sometimes the reason the person holds on to that anxiety is because they don't feel safe. Yeah. They're like, it protects me. It's like, because, and again, you know, it's, it's this fight, flight or freeze response. It's this mammalian brain which is designed to help you react to danger. So yeah. you see an opponent, you see a saber-toothed tiger, you, you fight it, you run from it, you play dead. Fight, flight, or freeze, yeah. fight or flight. Now that's all very good, but that's in the moment when you're in danger. Preemptively doing that isn't helpful. Yeah. So first you need to feel that you're, the world is safe enough that you can step out on stage, yeah. that you're not about to get attacked. You know? um, so I agree with you completely there. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it's, you know, some people will, can change very quickly, you know, but just because someone did doesn't, you know, it's different for everyone. And, and, it's, Definitely. and it's, 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 it's how, you know, it's making lasting change as well as, you know, not just, oh, I feel great. Now I need to go back for another fix, you know, uh, which is, you know, what drug dealers do really, you know. Yeah. Um, so going back to confidence then, what would be your top tips? teaching people how to be more confident um i say the there's the, i've got this uh, this little saying that i say to people it's called try small so yep. small steps actionable steps um and build those build those gradually um mm -hmm. so we we do get more confident by taking action Absolutely. We do like building habits. And uh, like, I think a lot of um, a friend just introduced me to a book called Atomic Habits, um, okay. which is all about sort of micro actions 
And then the more, I think a lot of people that have confidence issues have trust issues. They yeah. don't trust themselves and they don't trust other people. So one way to like really start to trust yourself more is to like actually make deals with yourself that you can keep. Yes. Uh, there's a smile of recognition. <laughs> so uh, I think that's uh, a good way. Um, definitely don't compare your inside to somebody else's outside. Um, and, you know, get help where if you, if you're really struggling, like get help, you know, mm -hmm. just have a look around, see, like um, I can give some tips about like finding a good practitioner. I think definitely check them out on social media, check out, but also like, you know, have a chat with them, see if you feel safe with them. You know, yes. like I think there's also finding the person that's right for you as well. Exactly. I think right rapport is like really important. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine that you and I within session are very different. Like if, if I had a client and you had a client, I expect that it would be quite a different experience for the client because you and I yes. are, we have different levels of, well, we have different personalities. We have different like techniques that we use. And also I think we, we as a practitioner, you develop your own style, don't you? Yes, absolutely. Like I mean, we have a lot clients, of crossover, but it won't necessarily be the same. No, no. And I think some go -to. clients... Yeah are the rapport i think the rapport is key i honestly think rapport is is key it, it does, almost doesn't matter like what their what technique you do with the person if the rapport is there yeah um it that's the key that's the key thing so make sure you find somebody that you feel completely comfortable and safe with um that's what i would say yeah i think that's uh, i think that's all very true um <laughs> So it's been a pleasure talking today. Is anything else you'd like to add? Uh, no, just stay groovy. Stay groovy, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a pleasure talking as ever. All right. Thanks, Chris. All right. See you soon. See ya.